February 14th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Exodus chapters 31 and 32 from the Old Testament The Lord spoke to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in skill, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all kinds of craftsmanship, to make artistic designs for work with gold, with silver, and with bronze, and with cutting and setting stone, and with cutting wood, to work in all kinds of craftsmanship. Moreover, I also have given you Aholiab, son of Ahisamech, of the tribe of Dan, and I have given ability to all the specially skilled, that they may make everything I have commanded you, the tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, the atonement lid that is on it, all the furnishings of the tent, the table with its utensils, the pure lampstand with all its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar for the burnt offering with all its utensils, the large basin with its base, the woven garments, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments for his sons to minister as priest, the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place. They will make all these things just as I have commanded you. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, Surely you must keep my Sabbaths, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So you must keep the Sabbath, for it is holy for you. Everyone who defiles it must surely be put to death. Indeed, if anyone does any work on it, then that person will be cut off from among his people. Six days' work may be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of complete rest, holy to the Lord. And anyone who does work on the Sabbath day must surely be put to death. The Israelites must keep the Sabbath by observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the Israelites forever, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. He gave Moses two tablets of testimony when he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, tablets of stone written by the finger of God. When the people saw that Moses delayed in coming down from the mountains, they gathered around Aaron and said to him, Get up, make us gods that will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Break off the gold earrings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the gold earrings that were on their ears and brought them to Aaron. He accepted the gold from them, fashioned it with an engraving tool, and made a molten calf. Then they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow will be a feast to the Lord. So they got up early on the next day and offered up burnt offerings and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. The Lord spoke to Moses, Go quickly to sin, because your people, whom you brought up from the land of Egypt, have acted corruptly. They have quickly turned aside from the way that I have commanded them. They have made for themselves a molten calf, and have bowed down to it, and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, which brought you from the land of Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people. Look what a stiff-necked people they are. So now leave me alone so that my anger can burn against them and I can destroy them and I will make from you a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God, and said, O Lord, why does your anger burn against your people whom you have brought out from the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say for evil he led them out to kill them in the mountains and to destroy them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent of this evil against your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by yourself, and told them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken about, I will give to your descendants, and they will inherit it forever. 
Then the Lord relented over the evil that he had said he would do to his people. Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands. The tablets were written on both sides. They were written on the front and on the back. Now the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, It is the sound of war in the camp. Moses said, It is not the sound of those who shout for victory, nor is it the sound of those who cry because they are overcome, but the sound of singing I hear. When he approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses became extremely angry. He threw the tablets from his hands and broke them to pieces at the bottom of the mountain. He took the calf they had made and burnt it in the ground, ground it to powder, poured it out on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought on them so great a sin? Aaron said, Do not let your anger burn hot, my lord. You know these people, that they tend to evil. They said to me, Make us gods that will go before us. For as for this fellow Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. So I said to them, Whoever has gold, break it off. So they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and the calf came out. Moses saw that the people were running wild, for Aaron had let them get completely out of control, causing derision from their enemies. So Moses stood at the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. All the Levites gathered around him, and he said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Each man fasten his sword on his side and go back and forth from entrance to entrance throughout the camp, and each one kill his brother, his friend, and his neighbor. The Levites did what Moses ordered, and that day about 3,000 men of the people died. Moses said, You have been consecrated today for the Lord, for each of you was against his son or against his brother, so he has given a blessing to you today. The next day Moses said to the people, You have committed a very serious sin, but now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement on behalf of your sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Alas, this people has committed a very serious sin, and they have made for themselves gods of gold. But now if you will forgive their sin, but if not, wipe me out from your book that you have written. The Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, the person I will wipe out of my book. So now go, lead the people to the place I have spoken to you about. See, my angel will go before you, but on the day that I punish... I will indeed punish them for their sin. And the Lord sent a plague on the people because they had made the calf, the one Aaron made. God, I always, um, when I read this part about Aaron, who's supposed to be the most righteous, one of the most righteous men in camp, um, I literally act like a, a four-year-old child lying to their parent when Moses said, um, what, what, happened here Aaron and he said I, I don't know they just gave me their gold and I threw it in the fire and out pops this and I didn't really have anything to do with it um, but the gold they gave him you had just asked for everyone to hand over all these things so that you could have the tabernacle built to your specifications and one of those things you required was gold and yet they had enough gold on them to build this entire uh, calf out of gold to fashion this idol for themselves. And it just struck me when I was reading this that we do that all the time. We say we don't have gold, but yet suddenly are able to find gold for our idols. We say we don't have time to help somebody with their ministry, yet we have time to watch TV, <laughs> fill our head with all sorts of crap. We say we don't have a, enough money to tithe because we need to pay our bills, but yet we have a new outfit the next week. I think of all the things that we, we trade off to appease our idols. 
for the most part, at least here in America, there's not a lot of gold idol worship with a bunch of different idols like we're seeing in the Old Testament, but we have to realize that, God, we put up so many idols before you. Uh, TV and entertainment is definitely one of them. Relationships is another one. Comfort, taking for granted our comfort as Americans is a huge one, I would say. Um, I would even say having control over our lives is another as another idol that we put before you that we want control before we're going to allow you to have control and and we say that you have control over this 82 percent of the situation but we're still holding on to pieces of it we're still holding on to our idols so even though we read the story and we're like ah how could these people do this but yeah we we do the same thing every day but but we've just gotten so used to living of this world that we don't even realize that intentionally we're creating all these idols before you we're taking all these things that should be to your glory for your ministry to help your people and we're choosing our own idols and i know that i know that your sense of justice um is right uh, period there there's no question in there uh, you made us you get to make the rules on how we're dealt with don't have a problem with that um, but I do ask God today as we're listening to these verses for your mercy initially not making excuses, but honestly, God, we've been putting idols in our life for such a long time that we may not even realize that they're there. We may not even notice how many things we exchange for what you want for your kingdom over what we want for our comfort and what we want for our joy and what we want for, for our fear that we feed. So initially, I ask for mercy, God. But the second thing I ask for today is for myself and everybody listening God, I just ask you to open up our hearts and show us these things. Some of our idols we know, and we need to work on those. And hopefully we all will. But gosh, there's some things that we just don't get, God. We don't realize that we have exchanged idols. We, we don't realize that we've exchanged our gold for the gold that should be in the tabernacle. <sighs> because we've gotten so used to our lives. There's no place in the Bible that you ever called a Christian to be comfortable. <laughs> ever. <sighs> so thank you in advance for your mercy in helping us learn what these idols are and then just cleanse our hearts and show us these idols. Help us to have strength to change these idols in our lives. To exchange them back for what it is that you want for your kingdom. Allow us to use our gifts not for us, but for you. Allow us to not use our time for us and what we want, but to use it for you. Allow us to not use the blessings that you've given us for us, but to turn them back into offerings for you. God, I just, I just love you so much with how you guide us and direct us. You're so incredibly patient with us. In your son's name I pray, amen.